Hey y'all, I'm Paula Dean. You know, I don't think there's anything better than sleeping in and staying in your PJs all day long. And today, me and Michael are gonna have breakfast in bed. I'm gonna be making him a sinfully delicious spicy cinnamon cake. Then I'm rolling up a buttery spinach gruyere puff pastry that's just gonna melt in his mouth. And then last but not least, <laughs> I'm making that boy a Dutch apple pancake that is so sweet and so rich, y'all are gonna think I'm serving him dessert for breakfast. So all my buddies out there, y'all jump back in the bed, pull up the covers, fluff up the pillows, because today we're having breakfast in bed. How would you like for me to bring you breakfast in bed? Oh, Michael, that would be so wonderful. Would you do that? I'd love to do it. You fix it and I'll bring it to you. Wake me up when it's fixed. Well, okay, I guess that's better than nothing. Listen, Otis, he's already snoring again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll be back. All right, wake us. Okay. <laughs> Y'all go back to sleep. I'm going to cook breakfast. All right, call us. Okay. Let's ready. You just get comfortable. There you go. Now, the first dish I'm going to start with this morning towards our breakfast is a spicy cinnamon cake. And it's going to be so quick and easy to make, it's not even funny. I'm going to start by breaking four eggs. into a dish. I'm gonna check those out, make sure those eggs are all right. And that one looks good. That one looks good. There's nothing I do, I don't think, that brings me more pleasure than serving Michael breakfast in bed. But this morning, he wanted to serve me in bed, so I'm still gonna do the cooking. All right, I'm gonna beat our four eggs up. And to our eggs, I'm gonna add one package of spice cake mix. I'm gonna add a half a cup of vegetable oil. It's gonna make it so moist and delicious. All right, now to our dish, I'm gonna add a small package of instant vanilla pudding. And one more ingredient that's gonna make this real, real moist is one cup of sour cream. It has a wonderful, wonderful flavor. I remember when Michael and I, well, a few months after we'd been seeing each other, somehow he wound up spending the night over. <laughs> and I got up and I fixed him breakfast and I served it to him on a silver tray and he was all snuggled under the covers and he didn't know what I was doing because he was still sleeping. But when I walked into that bedroom with his fabulous breakfast on a silver tray, uh, I think I really got his approval then. Uh, he said, this might not be half bad. <laughs> all right, I'm just gonna clean my Whip, try to get that cake mix out of there because this is ready to be mixed up. Now I'm going to put this in a bundt pan and I'm going to make sure I spray my pan very, very well because I want this to come out nice and pretty. All right, now I'm going to take half of our batter and put it in our pan. Just like that, that looks to be about half. And I'm gonna spread that around and make sure it's even in our pan. Okay. Now I'm gonna take half a cup of chopped pecans, two teaspoons of cinnamon, 
and five tablespoons of sugar. And I'm just gonna stir those together real good. And now I'm just gonna take this mixture and sprinkle half of it around on that first layer. So when we bite into this, there's gonna be a surprise in the center of our cake. All right, that's perfect. All right, now I'm just gonna come in with the rest of our batter and scoop that evenly on top. This smells good already and it's, it's not even baking yet. All right, now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna spread out our batter and that looks good. Now I'm gonna come in here with the rest of our mixture and sprinkle it on top. Now I'm gonna put this in a 350 degree preheated oven and I'm gonna let it bake for about an hour. I have a hard time sometimes when I'm uh, trying to decide what I want for breakfast if I want to go sweet or savory, you know. Do I want waffles? Do I want pancakes? Do I want something sweet? Uh, so this morning, I'm gonna have the best of both worlds. Definitely gonna have that sweet. All right, this is time to go in the oven. When we come back, I'm gonna show you a recipe that's gonna perfectly balance the savory with our sweet. Plus, it's gonna. Welcome back, y'all. Look, you've caught me in my pajamas, and you wanna know why? Cause Michael and I are gonna have breakfast in bed this morning. And now I'm on to make spinach gruyere puff pastry. I'm gonna start by sauteing a cup of sliced mushrooms in two tablespoons of butter. You wouldn't think about eating mushrooms for breakfast, but it really, really is good. And I'm gonna add a little salt a little pepper to go ahead and flavor up those mushrooms. And while these are sauteing, I'm gonna take a 10 ounce package of frozen spinach. Now you wanna make sure spinach has a lot of water. You can see how much water has just dripped out voluntarily. Now I'm gonna just give it a squeeze with my spatula, just like that, and you can see all the water that's coming out. I think I may take a paper towel and just blot it with that to make sure I get out that extra moisture. I'm gonna dump that over in there in another bowl. And these are coming along nicely. All right, now I'm gonna pour this over into our spinach, butter and all, and you can see I'm gonna take that spatula and make sure I get every bit of that butter. It's in that pan. And I've got one cup of Gruyere cheese. And I'm just gonna mix that together. You wouldn't think about eating spinach for breakfast, but it really, really is good. All right. Now I'm gonna brush our puff pastry with a little melted butter. This breakfast is sure gonna beat the heck out of a bowl of cereal. All right, now I'm gonna take our filling. And I'm gonna just spread it over our puff pastry. You know, Michael and I are having this for breakfast, but this dish would also make a wonderful hors d'oeuvre if you're having a cocktail party. Uh, this is a very versatile dish. All right. Now we're gonna take our, our pastry and we're just gonna start rolling it. And we wanna roll it fairly tight. And I think you're probably getting the idea of what we're gonna wind up with. Isn't that pretty? Pretty piece of dough. 
All right, now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna cut that little end off because you can see I didn't bring the filling all the way to the end. So I'm gonna cut that off and then I'm gonna start slicing this into about quarter of an inch pieces, just like that. Now, if y'all wanna really get ahead of the game, you can make this ahead and put this in the freezer. And then all you have to do is pull it out, let it thaw for a minute, and then finish it up so you can really enjoy your morning in bed. This is a great way to get vegetables in Michael because I have to tell you, when it's time for me to get the salads together and bowl them up, you know, he always says, no, I don't think I'm gonna have salad, I'm on a diet. So this is a great way for me to sneak his vegetables in on him because he can't resist that puff pastry. All right, I'm gonna give it a little bitty squirt. It won't take much because there is so much butter in puff pastry already. Now I'm just gonna lay these out on our sheet. So we're gonna put these in the oven, a 350 degree oven, and we're gonna bake them for about 20 minutes. But in the meantime, I smell something that smells so good, and it's telling me that it's ready. So, what you think? What you think about this cake? Ladybird says she likes it. Look at that. And I'm just gonna sit that right there and let it cool for a minute. And we're gonna put in our pinwheels. Now I have another tray that should be ready. And they are, look how good those look. And you can see what I mean when I tell you that these would make a wonderful appetizer at a cocktail party. Lady Bird's using the magic word. She just said, Mama, I'm gonna give Lady Bird one of these too because they'll be good for her, the spinach in it. These are a little, a little warm. Look at these, they're so light. And look at the beautiful bottom, how brown it is. Mmm. Mmm. And the Gruyere cheese, it almost tastes like a cheese straw. Michael's gonna love them. But you know what? I've balanced our cinnamon cake with a savory. When we come back, I'm going back to something sweet. How about a pancake that you bake in the oven? Sounds pretty good, don't it? <laughs> mm -mm. Hey, welcome back, y'all. Now, our cake has cooled a little bit, and I'm gonna bring it over here, and I'm gonna turn it out onto my cake stand, and I'm just gonna flip it and hope I hear it plop out. Yeah. Look how good that looks. But because it's got the pecans and the sugar on the other side, I think I'm gonna turn it. There you go, I think this side's prettier, don't y'all? And I've got some beautiful pansies from my garden that I'm just gonna garnish it with. And then I think I'm gonna cut me just a little taste. I can test this and it'll just be all right. It won't hurt for one slice to be missing out of it. Oh, Cody. Come here, Cody, you want some cake? You want a bite of cake? Mm -mm. Oh, Cody. This is wonderful. Y'all gonna love it. Smear it with a little butter. 
It'll be over the top. Okay, y'all move on in here with me because the, my next recipe I think y'all are gonna like. I'm gonna be making an oven-baked Dutch apple pancake that we never have to pour out on a griddle and worry about is it gonna turn out right. And I'm gonna start by heating up a skillet. I'm gonna take two cans of apple pie filling. Do y'all know there's a lot of different variations to the pancake depending on which country you're in. And I think the Dutch quite often bake their pancakes in the oven and you can find all different varieties. You can, you can find savory pancakes. Quite often they make a tiny pancake perhaps filled with a custard that they serve for dessert. Now to our apples and our butter, I'm gonna add one teaspoon of ground cinnamon that's gonna add a nice little spice to our apples. All right, now while that's heating, I'm gonna move down here and I'm gonna start making the batter that's gonna form my pancake. And I'm gonna start with three eggs. I'm gonna just give those a quick little beat. And then I'm gonna add a half a cup of milk. And then I'm gonna add one tablespoon of sour cream. All right, I'm gonna add one teaspoon of lemon zest. And that's gonna give it a nice little, just a little tart bite. And then I'm gonna add one half a cup of all-purpose flour. And this doesn't have to be totally smooth. You don't wanna overbeat your pancake or your waffle batter. Now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna pour it directly on top of those apples. Looking pretty good, isn't it, y'all? <laughs> and I'm gonna transfer our pancake to a baking sheet just in case it spills over. I don't want a big old mess in my oven. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna gently walk this over to the oven because you can see I got my pan really full and it's heavy. My arms almost have the shakes, it's so heavy. Ooh. Okay. All right. So in the oven that goes, and when we come back, just in case this dish hadn't been fast enough for you, I'm gonna show you some breakfast tips that are even quicker and a great way to start your day. So if you're short on time, come back, because I'm gonna show you how to make up. There's nothing better in the morning than a smoked salmon mixed up in cream cheese with some chopped onions and some capers. You can make a spread out of it and spread it on that nice fresh bagel. Or you can make beautiful little salmon roses and have all your condiments, your capers, your lemon juice, your onions, and just serve it right on top of your bagel. Now you can't get any faster than that or more delicious.